the final match of today, uh, the match of the ILG LCL. This is day two of qualifier one between Zero, Team Zero Respect and Team Warriors. So we did just see Team Zero Respect go against pretty much the other strongest team in this entire league, which is, is it, namely Knox Ignis Elementia. And we did see them have a very torrid time, really, in that last match. They were just they were just pushed against a corner with no way out and they just could not try and bounce back. So hopefully, whatever happened, they're able to brush it all off. They were able to kind of set their defenses behind and really approach this game as something new because it really is something new. And immediately, we see the lock-in from Jungle Basis Shaco. This is his best jungle, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one pick that he has used to completely to, to soar to the top and pretty much hit diamond five with so uh it is actually a very well practiced it is actually a very well practiced and well uh kind of coordinated pick i guess if he manages to pull it off with his team but that remains to be seen we'll pretty much um, one thing's for sure rest assured this this is a highly practiced time so expect to see some magic happen with this shako so yeah and on the other side, uh, let's just go over the band before we actually head into the picks. And we see the Morgana, Vi, and Amumu. So that's two very common jungler gang, jungler bands, and a common Morgana band. Obviously, Morgana being uh, being a fairly traditional band, but again, you it comes down to what you'd want support paints playing in that particular match. That you always have this one holy trinity of picks for a, pretty much every lane in general. And for the support, it just happens to be on the side of around Morgana, Thresh, and Jana. We see these constantly in rotation, and some teams do love denying one of those picks so that they can kind of build comps towards them. Maybe they'll have a plan, plan a team comp in mind. They're like, okay, Morgana completely shuts us down. Let's try and ban it out. You could probably ban it that way in case you haven't researched the enemy team much, but I'm not quite sure about how much backing goes into ZR versus into. The ZR versus Warriors, I'm not sure whether they've looked up Warriors much. But one thing is for sure, Warriors have surely not uh, researched ZR. Otherwise, you would pretty much see that Shaco band coming from them straight up. And instead, Oriana, Vayne and Lee Sin bands being shown from uh, Warriors onto Jung uh, Zero, or from Warriors on against Zero Respect. So. These bands, I'm not quite sure why you would ban a Vayne unless the enemy, uh, unless the enemy any carry is pretty much reputed for going Vayne and Omare, I'm not, uh, I haven't ever seen him play Vayne really. I've seen him play more Caitlyn than some, uh, any, uh, any carry like Vayne because people who actually main Vayne play a significant amount of her and have actually made the pick count in its own right which these guys are not which these guys i haven't particularly seen him play enough vein to actually make it a threat and uh, so in that regard although yes it is a fairly snowballing pick it really i don't see i'm not able to find that one particular reason as to why they would sure headedly ban that vein and uh, Lee Sin is just a general ban which would you probably see in solo queue a lot because of his amazing potential in the jungle, we did see just right now, like just recently, worst all forest, literally preying on the weak early game of an enemy jungle to completely turn the early game around, then come just get dominate with his own team by snowballing each and every single lane one by one sequentially. So uh, right now we do see, uh, right, and slowly going to the picks, we do see Jungler please insta locking Shako the first bloody opportunity, first opportunity that he got, and uh, it's pretty much shows how much confidence he boasts playing Shako. It must well, probably his most loved champ. I mean, if you're gonna play at least 500 odd games with him in ranked and climb to diamond with him, why wouldn't you pretty much love playing him? I guess and. We do see a Kha'Zix jungle. That this is the first time Kha'Zix jungle, and I'm not quite sure how Kha'Zix will fare in this current, uh, in this new season jungle. He pretty much is in the same boat as Wu Pong, in my opinion, where he will pretty much uh, struggle and end up getting executed in the more powerful camps if he's not careful or you know does not have his smite up. 
So <laughs> that that lane still remains to be seen, and this is the first time we are seeing a Jarvan mid coming in. Yes, there is a mid Jarvan as we do see the Wukong taking teleport in that top lane going in, and same goes for the Zillion support. So very. It's so three new picks. I mean, one isn't particularly new pick, but it's a rather a new approach where Jarwin is going to the mid lane. He is generally a very good pick all round in the jungle, in the top lane, and pretty much in the mid, depending on what matchups you've seen. And so Warriors bring something new to the table, trying out something, and it looks like they're unfazed by the results that have happened in this tournament so far. So it will be interesting to see what they would do, what they would kind of work out. And uh, on the side of Zero Respect, we do see uh, along with the jungle, the jungle tree, is Shako, we see the Thresh coming in on Drake's Hero, as well as the Graves going in uh, for the bot lane. So Graves Thresh, kind of a decent, kind of a decent lane, fairly standard lane that you pretty much see in probably solo queue. I have, I, I'm not quite sure how far it will kind of carry towards in the um, in the laning phase but they are against a Tristana and a Zillion so that particular matchup sure yes Zillion is known to be a very good a very big menace in the early game because normally they just stockpile all the AP they ever can within the first six uh, six levels throughout and throughout the rest of the early game before they contest for the first track and they you're, you're just built to give rain death and hell and completely scare your scare the enemy to carry away from even cs so uh that's there that's one particular thing and uh in the coming to the mid lane we do see the re being picked into the jar and so probably easy easy will be able to prove a better showing than he did last time with the fizz because Last time he was pretty much out roamed by a Fitz on that Syndra. While he, uh, while although he was a Fizz, he could roam as well the whole time. He did not quite manage to make that happen. And this time he is going to be an Ari. So hopefully he, hopefully he kind of provides a new show and actually ends up coming out ahead in uh, kind of the matchup. The whole matchup, the whole Ari versus Javan matchup is, uh, of course, comes down to individual skill. Because on the on the side of Easy Peasy, he'll need to find out a way to dodge the EQ, the the martial, uh, the Martian standard into the Dragon Strike. That will come up from Charvin and find a way to deal with it and equally trade with it as well. So uh, it'll he'll have to kind of watch out, see how things go. And uh, it's kind of a dicey matchup, but for the Jarvan, there is just one single thing he needs to keep in mind: items and power spikes. When he hits that few, when he hits that brutalizer into that Tiamat, he will rain death upon anybody he ever so comes across. And that is actually uh, that is actually a very scary thing. Whenever you see a Jarvan reaching that power spike, whenever you see him getting that first brutalizer and then slowly ending up killing everyone. So, uh, yeah, that uh, will pretty much be how it starts. And right, just one second. I'll just quickly be right back. I'm being called for a bit. Sorry, guys. That's the order location in team team free chat. Thank you, sir. Right, and I'm back. So, uh, as we go in, we do see the masked Shako coming in from Jungle Lifty. He's also posting a skin to boot along with all that and an SKTT1 Jax. Now, that is a limited edition SKTT1 Jax, named, of course, after the famous top laner going by the name of Impact. So, uh, Grace, he's just showing us that he has played a fair amount of Jax in uh, in through, throughout his top lane 
career i guess and uh, on the side of warriors we do see the rocket cult shana coming in which is a fairly which is a fairly unique skin amongst itself i don't i don't i don't it's a legendary it isn't a legendary it's just a unique skin uh, amongst itself i guess amongst others i guess right so now let's delve into the level 1 and how strong they are and who should probably go for the war on the side of sorry um, on the side of zero respect we see a shako we see a thresh we see a grave so their primary form of cc is the thresh q i don't think they would go to the extent of picking the charm first on the ari so we could kind of not consider that until they really do have a big plan in mind for an invade based on team comps but for now the thresh hook and the jack counter strike is an only form of cc so i'm expecting a guard but on the other hand you do have a shako who can pretty much we can pretty much try and invade the jungle solely through boxes and we can expect we can we could probably expect some fancy plays from him alone in the jungle really while on the side of warriors we see a jarvan the fourth we see a zillion with his many, with his many bombs we see a tristana we see a wukong and a kha'zix so nobody particularly has any significant cc at all so it's a team with little cc that is kind of hard to land as a team with no cc and while you would look there look at that as an opportunity to invade and what not i'm really curious to see how they played out because they have fairly decent kill potential would you say even though it is a kha'zix who is fairly weak at level 1 considering the many nerfs he's been through throughout ever since release like it's it's endless what what her i did to kha'zix it was just a plethora of blah buffs nerfs and what not so the gls shifts coming out at the very start before 50 and it's 15 seconds I do not quite see zillion buying items yet so he will kind of chill out in base saying goes to the jarvan and okay he finally has and they're pulling out and we immediately see zero respect kind of moving in into that mid lane brush trying to get there before uh, tilay is prawn and that's not my name try and spot them out and a ping goes in they do not see them and kind of a poor spot to counter in base they haven't been placed in the early wards warriors might very well be in for a giant surprise and it looks like they are going for the full in base recognizing that the enemy is on fcc and that ward is a dead giveaway everybody is spotted right now and this is going to be a brawl and this hook does hit will they go on this who will go down first it will be oh my god that is a gigantic blow up and a zillion bomb will definitely not be enough and this is it i guess the team with had more i guess the team with cc was the team of no cc always sees the team with cc winning in level 1 and uh well that's a very fairly clean cut first blood going to no going to easy peasy rather so that will actually prove to be highly problematic for uh the jav in the fourth on the side of warriors and we'll we, we'll see if he actually makes it count we'll see if he manages to create that into a great opportunity and end up actually setting javan on the back foot throughout early game because it is very possible to do that and so standard lane is going through shako directly starting his red buff it seems so he hasn't been able to set up much boxes ordinarily you'd expect shako to just stay right back and set up boxes in the camp and pretty much instantly take a camp without even having to smite or at least that's how he went around back in season 3 i'm not sure how he survived in the new jungle i'm really curious though to see how he would go because he is very the most weaker jungler out of them all however kha'zix we've already seen a bunch of kha'zix jungles and we have seen their problems that they have especially when they go to take raptors you need to watch out for your health when you take that camp as a kha'zix jungle because you will pretty much get instant if you go against a raptor camp and you end up not having smite or anything at all so a red start into a wolves into a possible blue for a jungler please as opposed to a blue start into wolves into a red on the side of tools and on on side of kha'zix i'm not quite sure why they're going for the smaller camps and we do see a tussle already happening 
and Grace Jesus putting his putting Grandmaster's mites passive to good use, trying to build up that extra attack spin, trying to gain the this thing, and a charm, blatant straight up charm missing right onto the right onto the job in the fourth by the RA not able to recognize abilities and this is slowly and steadily not working out on the side of Wukong right now. Wukong right now because he has already picked up two fights and it has ended up with the Jax coming out ahead. However, Jax is out of mana. So the right amount of minions and that will be a straight up charm finally landing and an ignite goes on. Will it be enough? I don't think it will be enough to kill these guys did kill Tylo DJ at the top lane, so I guess that is just an ignite opportunity that is kind of missed, really. Also, one thing to note is that Jack should go for the flash ignite, so it means he's going for a full kill lane, and that will be jungler play going for the second gank. Can he go on? No, it is a Jarvan. We keep forgetting, we forget his amazing ability to escape. We always think that just because a Shaco comes in a jungle gangs, we're so tuned to thinking that they die instantly. However, we should realize that the enemy has a bunch of escapes as well. And that is exactly what we saw. A textbook random, uh, a textbook straightforward escape from the job. Not, not random, really. Right, so going towards in the bot lane, things appear to be seen fairly quiet. We do see only a few bombs from Zillion. I'm not quite sure why he should be signed, why why he isn't spamming them to be quite honest, because Zillions are just known to give you not to be an absolute nice. He does have mana potion so he can actually spam away freely as and as much as he likes. Really? And uh, that will be a hook going on onto the Tristana. The jump does kind of secure her exit though. So, two AD carries that can escape, but not to, to but and so it comes down to the supports really for now in this lane, at least to my knowledge. It'll come to well, and that's a second, two consecutive hooks hitting right there, and they are not able to go in. And I'm not quite sure why Zillion flashed right in front. There was no way that his hook would be back off cool on immediately. I guess he just kind of panicked when he saw this guy go that when he saw. That's not my name, go that far, go that close. Or a possible mistake that he took to key perhaps, I'm not quite sure. Some, definitely a bit of miscommunication, definitely a bit of a mistake over there. And hopefully Drake Zero is able to kind of construct off of this because his own flash is up while uh, Omale's flash is actually down. So, bit of a bit of a good exchange kind of coming out on in favor of Zero Respect there because they did manage to take out the Tristana and actually send her managed to send her back in that bot lane and we do see another gank coming in onto that mid lane. He is really trying to get easy PC rolling. And that will be the charm hitting but it is still not enough. They are just able to walk right out and Kha'Zix hanging around there trying to see if he can come up and fight uh, jungler please right now. Does not appear to be able to do so and then we do see the task going right in and oh my god it is complete chaos and after chaos of that and it will result in Kha'Zix's demise he made a bad call to run right onto Ari right there I'm completely confused right now and oh the flat hook completely missing Trix zero it's okay you didn't have to go that far especially considering that the Jarvan was that far was kind of already on his way to his own tower and eventually escaping certain danger but oh well, that is going to be a bit of a fail roam with you know, only resulting in the Kha'Zix's death at the cost of a flash. So bot lane right now is sitting on no summoners. So we won't see any particular engages unless they use minions to their advantage, which is another thing that we see. And this is what I'm talking about, the level 6 spike onto the Jarvan. On uh, by the Jarvan and he just runs right onto Ari and recognizes that Ari had already used ultimate and this will be a repeat hack in the top lane and a clean escape on the side of Warriors. So after that first blood, literally just the only other kill that Zero Respect has got was on the Kha'Zix again. Sure, sure. And wow, that is a beautiful hook right onto there. And we do see Jungle, jungle Beast repeat ganking Wukong. And this is kind of what a Shako does. He'll kind of give you this false sense of security and he'll be able to run right back because of how long he can stay invisible 
thanks to his Q. So that is really good. And right now Drake Zero on fire right now with him. despite despite his failed flash hook at that mid lane roam, he is still showing severe prowess and severe presence really compared to the Zillion because the Zillion, while he is trying to spam as many bombs as possible, somehow Omali just seems to be living through. Probably this has something to do with Graves' innate tankiness and the fact that he is able to live through most of all that. But we do see a gank coming in from the Kha'Zix right now to the top lane. Or is it? No, not quite. He just gives up. Does not want to go any further. Record. Maybe he must have. They must have. Probably, they must believe that there are more walls. And wow, another brilliant hook. Drake Zero is on fire on that thresh today. He has hit three straight hooks with, with, the, with the, and the last hook that he missed was literally that flash hook over there. Because every time the camera has panned, panned over to him, I have only seen him hit his threat hooks. And right now, we do see both the jungler and the mid laner of Warriors. And again, this is what I was trying to point out. EZP is having the same problem as he did last game. The, un the inability to counter roam. And will this actually end up being a kill though? No, not quite. The oh, never mind. I forgot that Javan had the Cataclysm the whole time. And wow, a misclick coming in on the side of Zillion. And this will be an... Bit of an easy kill for easy peasy. Yes, it is an easy peasy kill for easy peasy himself. So the counter room finally comes in. They actually kind of fairly overstay their welcome, and Zillion with that crucial, crucial mistake of completely whiffing his bomb and putting it on himself and ending up taking a tower shot, which completely does not work in his favor at all. So Drake Zero and Omale really doing kind of doing the best they can in their lane right now and really trying to make those few whatever what few opportunities they have into complete like snowballs snow snowball opportunities and even avenues to win the game so good stuff really good stuff coming in from uh, both team from coming in from the side of zero respect a completely different side from than what we saw last game they're actually kind of confidently going around trying to make those plays however warriors are they, they however it is not without any response from warriors warriors did make a very good roam both um javan and the kazix moving to the bot lane and trying to trying to go into the kill they did attempt to go and uh, they did attempt to go and did end up getting a kill on the i think thresh but not after until after oh wow okay this is another big gank and will jack actually be able to get out of this yes he actually can i'm not even sure this thing will be enough and this will be a counter roam by easy peasy as well as a counter yank even from jungler please and this will end up in a third death from the Kha'Zix and that is it that will seal the deal and wow there is nothing that they can do against a giant cataclysm but however Zero Respect kind of following warriors around and actually setting things right in their own, in their own way and a 7-3 this and that will lead to give them 7 kills in 11 minutes they can't really get an objective off of this off of this yet but has to do with and uh, wow that is a flat out in there i'm pretty sure even tristana is dead or not no never mind oh my god that is so 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 aggressive will graves actually die for that no not quite it takes one more target shot to kill graves over there sorry guys i was completely unsure i was completely thinking about something else while that whole fight is going on i wasn't making attention and wow so that happened uh, <laughs> Both teams were going into a comedy of errors, starting with Omale going a little too far and getting out just before the turret to put another fatal shot. And seriously, that's not my name. Really not being able to, not assessing, not getting what to do right now because he just walked right back into range of a Graves without realizing that he has certain AOE abilities that can gap close and end up killing him. So, Zero Respect kind of... They're at least positive. They're at least going going forward. They'll try to probably put a little more pressure, get the kill, get more kills rolling, try to contest objectives, and kind of get ahead that way. And well, the first dragon will go for them. This they're pretty much setting themselves up so that the sheer numbers advantage created by them will allow them to get further dragons and barons.
So, we do see a siege going on in that mid lane after getting top lane. They are properly rotating. I guess they're kind of taking a they're taking a page off of most of most of the other teams that uh, are having cr crushing wins. And wow, look at this! Doing significant, doing absolutely fatal damage to the Kazix and even the Jar are not being able to deal with the Jax right now. He's only one, one, and three, but he's already finished his build water cutlass and. Seriously, extremely poor coordination happening from from Dilo DJ because even he is not able to teleport and support them. I'm really not sure what warriors are doing right now. They are not able to back each other up. They are not able to make any use of Wukong's teleport. In fact, there hasn't been a teleport to at the start to even talk about its uses on the side of warriors. So I'm not quite sure why they he did even pick the teleport at all and. If this sounds harsh, it's because it's really real. They haven't managed to teleport anywhere. And right now he's actually recalling uh, over there. They could probably set up a lot of engages, but they're not really taking the initiative to do so. So you have a Kha'Zix with four deaths practically shut down for now. And uh, we yet to see if they completely make this count. It usually starts with multiple wards on the enemy jungle. From you should be it pretty much starts with zero respect completely and utterly warring um, warriors is jungle and then slowly trying to work around from there because they already have enough kills on the Kha'Zix and he is already weakened to the point where he can where it's pretty much easy to kill. And right now we do see a teleport at long last coming in to kind of cover Java Javan's escape, but. What use is it? Why would you want, want to go for it? Why didn't, and moreover, why didn't he cancel it once he sees that Jarn is actually free of the danger that's surrounding him? Again, very, very questionable decisions coming in from Dialo DJ in the, in the top lane because he's not putting his globe lens to good use and he's actually letting an enemy top lane and... Oh my god, this is actually a... They're trying to turn around from this, but no, they're just getting mobbed. Zero Respect just have the better positioning here and a clear, clear winner and this is a free, practically a free mid tower because there is nothing a Zillion and a Tristana can do in the face of a Graves and Thresh and pretty much an entire enemy team that's right now and look at that, Fearless Gracie is going right in and wow, no, he actually parts very wrongly <laughs> that ends up working so against him because he does end up dying to the tower but I don't think that practically matters Although it's a kill did for Tristana, but there is, at the moment it doesn't seem like she can immediately do something with it. It wasn't really that crucial kill that she needs to get rolling and kind of heal brought from the losses. And wow, this is just plain overstaying. They're just getting mobbed one by one by warriors. So it's now what started out as a really good team fight for Zero Respect is working out against them. And wow, that is some amazing kiting coming from outside of Omale and a triple kill. Really, really, really good, good form from Omale to be able to kite them so well. And a very good charm. Will it be able to finish them off? No, she doesn't have quite have the mana. And Zillion does have his own ult. And will she already share the procket? No, she won't. She'll just rather let it slide. And Zillion is home free for now. For now, people, for now. The fun and the pain is just starting. <laughs> On, I'm, I'm of course talking from a perspective of zero respect, zero respect, where they have completely, completely kind of steamrolled in terms of kills. And hopefully they recognize what what they need to do next or, uh, ob objectively. And for example, Dragon is kind of live right now. They could probably go for that, but it does look like the red team will kind of get to it first if they all move right now. But again, they don't seem to be showing that energy. They don't seem to be showing that spirit where they just move right in as a team and still believe in that possibility that if we do cast them off, we can kind of do something about it and wow that is really really good damage onto that Kha'Zix completely deleting him, out, deleting him out of the fight with that and we will see Jarwin I'm not sure if they'll wait out the EQ yes that will be and this thing and wow I can't I'm shocked that he's living but he will try to a final leap strike from the Jacks most likely or it does seem so and yes that will be it for the chapter of Jarwin and Omale finishing 
complete, uh, completely won't be wanting and ending up killing the zillion. This just goes to show how weak warriors are in their own right. They've just been picking bad fights. Their jungles are making questionable decisions, and I can't believe I'm actually talking about that in the midst of <laughs> Omale getting an unofficial triple kill. And uh, rather point is flash, but who's watching anyway? Right, right, guys. Doesn't really matter when the Graves is like nine zero six in eighteen minutes now, isn't it? So they are actually going to go for a Nexus Tower. I'm not sure if they'll be desperate enough to finish the game. Actually, they should not stay any further. Very good Mika is actually saving Grave from certain death from Nexus Towers. I can't actually believe that they're actually letting the game go this far. But uh, Omale just trying to beast and completely play with their minds now. And same same thing with Grace. Jesus, look at how easily, look at how he's just ignoring Dilo DJ in the top lane and seriously a comedy of errors coming in from Warriors and at long last the shutdown bonus on Omale going to none other than Kha'Zix and that is actually the last target that you'd want to see and wow he does he dies yet again to that so it's pretty much reset his gold value and he's basically giving it giving an easier time to zero respect right now with all that and Seriously, I can't see any way for uh, Warriors to come back from this because they they just seem fairly uncoordinated. They're not able to put in what the plan that they had in mind to good use. They should have recognized that yes, they had no CC, so they could probably be invaded upon. So they could have they should have reverted to a counter invade strategy and could have actually backed off to minimize the lot to completely prevent any deaths that could have completely jeopardized the flow of the game and. What really happened was they ended up jeopardizing the flow of the game. And Kha'Zix just kept getting, not only was he, did he keep getting invaded on, it was just all and why is the spectator client stuck? I'm not quite sure what's happening right now. They're all just a thing. And wow, a five man disconnect happening on the side of. <laughs> this thing and okay well it does look like they've reconnected never mind that was just an awkward momentary pause still doesn't change the situation they're in it definitely does not contribute to the situation they're in and that will be omale soloing the dragon for his team and they will be looking to close the games or things going out on that bot lane uh, outer tower so they will be rotating to that and they will look up look to end the game from there so they are moving at five and again, I believe an PC is happening is happening to these three players. I'm not quite sure either they're extremely lagging or they're just not able to keep a stable connection with the game for now. And that will be wow. I guess I guess zero respect really are living up with the name of zero respect because anybody else would have just seen the fact that they DC and were kind of sort of tried to work around them and not done much. However, no respect, zero respect, literally giving zero respect to this team right now. It is crazy what is happening and look at that, Grace Jesus just happily, happy to tank tower for his team and happily just go right in and they just went all in. And that will be the GG for zero respect. Kind of a quick game, fairly quick game. I guess the, it, this goes to show that they completely put you last game's horrifying channel. run behind and that ended up working really well for them. So, there we have it. I am Zaraz and with that, this is the final match for 3-2. See you tomorrow. There, there will be, I believe, four matches tomorrow. So, see you then. And until then, it's good night from Zaraz. See you guys. Okay, so